If you bow your head and pray with me. Dear Lord, we come to you in this time, God, and we pray that you would be with us as we, as we read and study your word, Lord. Uh, Lord, no, no words of human creation have any merit, God, but, but we know that, that your words are powerful, God. Lord, I pray that, that you would use me right now. Speak through me. May I be a tool to convey your words and your truth and your message to your people, Lord. And God, in your name we pray. Amen. So one of uh, two of my favorite shows on TV right now, I don't know if y'all watch them or not, uh, are Arrow and The Flash. Uh, they're superhero shows about uh, people with amazing abilities. They fight crime. They save the day. They, and uh, it's one of the cool things they do is they have these crossover episodes where one character will go on to another show. Uh, as, as, in fact, that's actually how The Flash started. The, the, uh, the, the character, Barry, got these... Uh, amazing abilities. He can run really, really fast. And but he he was he didn't know what to do with him, uh, so he went and spoke to Oliver, the Green Arrow, this uh, who's already been fighting crime for a long time. And uh, Oliver gave him the courage. He talked to him, motivated him to take up the mantle, to put on a costume, and go out and use his use his powers for good to to save the day. And uh, I, just, I just I really I love that uh, that notion of of someone helping that hero uh, take up the call. And, uh, and just like the Flash had Green Arrow's help in, in beginning his heroic journey, we often have people in our lives that help us in, in our own spiritual journeys. Uh, and today I want to read about a, a pair of friends who did just that. Uh, so if you would please stand and join me. We're reading uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him, him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe me? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. You may be seated. Reading through this text, I can't help but, but see how it illustrates God's relationship with us. It shows how God knows us. Uh, we read in, in verse 48 that before Philip came to get Nathaniel, God already knew him. I know it's really easy for us to spout off Sunday school language. It's really easy for us to say, oh, God is almighty, God is all-knowing, God is all-powerful. But I don't, I don't want to just gloss over that or ignore it. I, I really want us to understand what does it mean for God to know us. I think it's really uh, cool. I didn't tell Mr. Frankie to make our reading today, Psalm 139, but I'm glad he did. Because uh, it's, a, it's a breathtaking picture of how God knows us. Uh, verse 1, he you have searched me and known me. Well, it, it's not, God didn't, didn't just peruse. He's not just window shopping and kind of taking a look at us. I think he searches, he investigates, he dissects, he, he digs, he explores. I think you know, God has searched us and he knows us through that. He cares to us for such an extent that he's going to go through all that trouble. He's, he, we're not just something like an afterthought. We're not just, just something that he did on a whim. Like he, he cares for us. He he. he searches for us. Um, verse 2, you discern my thoughts from afar. Uh, and that's really appropriate for today's text because who, else, who else's thoughts did God know from afar? Well, Nathaniel. Uh, Jesus declared him to be a true Israelite in whom there is no deceit. And for that to be true, it meant Jesus had to have known him. Before Philip went, before any of this happened, God, Jesus had already known Nathaniel, known he was going to, he was going to be there. And uh, 
just, and, uh, just like the psalmist and just like Nathaniel, so too are we known by God. God knows what we're thinking. He knows what we're feeling. Uh, just like I told the children earlier, uh, Paul told the Romans that even when we don't have words, we can still pray and the Spirit will intercede for us. If there are times we're so distraught or so frustrated or so angry that we don't even, we don't have words, we just, uh, God, God still knows what we're trying to say. He still knows, he still knows the prayer in our heart and, and he, he knows it because he knows us. You search out my path and my laying down. You're acquainted with all my ways. That's from verse 3. Uh, he knows everything we're going to do. He knows our habits. He knows our favorites. He knows our struggles. He knows our dreams. He knows everything. And how did he get to know us so well? Well, it's because he made us. That's why I love the, the second part of the psalm today was, uh, you knitted my inward parts. You, uh, you, uh, you know, I love that verse 15, God made us intricately in the depths of the earth. I have this, this picture of a master craftsman down in the basement of his workshop, slowly carving and tinkering away, painting you know, his next masterpiece, getting it ready for, to show off to the world. Uh, it says, Your eyes saw my unformed substance. I, think, uh, I, did, I studied some art in college, and one of the things I found most fascinating was, was sculpture. Uh, because if you ever look at like, a famous sculpture like the Michael, I like the like the Michelangelo's David or something like that. It is a solid piece of marble. Basically, the the artist was and you bought a piece of marble, and before he touched it, before he did anything, the artist had to already know what the sculpture was going to be. It wasn't like you, uh, you know, he or she didn't carve the arm out of one piece and stick it on there, and carve the head out of another piece and stick it on there. So, you, looking at this block, seeing this unformed substance, the artist had to already know what was inside. The artist had to know exactly how that arm was going to be carved out, how that leg was going to be carved out, how the face was going to be turned, because you, you, you can't just, with, with marble or stone, you can't just, you know, glue some spackle back on there. If you, if you, cut, if you, if you cut that chin too deep, you've got to start over, or you change the way the head's going to be shaped or something like that. But it's just, so I, I love that image of God seeing this unformed substance and seeing us in that unformed substance. In your book, this is, this is verse 16, in your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me. I, mean, I love the, the idea that our days are already written. God knows us so well. He knows our past. He knows our present. He knows our future. Paul talks, uh, told the Ephesians about uh, how God has things set aside for us to do. He has, he has plans for us. He has, and he has, we, have, we have work to do as his people. And uh, I love he doesn't know that because he read ahead or anything like that. He knows it because he, read, he wrote the book. He wrote our book. He wrote the book of life. Sorry, I, that's not today's text. I'm digressing really far off today's text, but I really wanted us to, to see how much that, that pours into today's text about God knowing us. And because God knows us so well, he knows the best way to reach us. He knows the best way to get a hold of us. Now, in some cases, uh, like Paul, it's through direct intervention. Uh, maybe, maybe you came to know Jesus through very, very, very similar. You were walking down the road, and the heavens opened, God struck you blind, and you know, spoke to you audibly. Maybe you know, He can do that. It doesn't happen to all of us, but maybe, he, maybe, that's, maybe that's how you came to know God. Or, or you know, for others, uh, God gets to know us. God reaches out to us through some outside force. Uh, maybe like Jonah, uh, through a violent storm, through being stuck in the belly of a whale. Maybe some kind of force outside your control led you to God. Maybe a hurricane, uh, maybe the death of a loved one, uh, something. May, maybe God reached out to you through that, and that's how you came to be part of God's family. That's how you were drawn close to Jesus. Uh, but for some of us, God reaches out to us through the people that are already in our lives. And I think it makes sense because you know, we are already affected so much by the people in our lives. I know if, there's, if I need help with something, there are people in my life I go to. I'll go to Mr. Frankie. I'll go to my friends. I'll go to my family. I'll go to you know, coworkers. There's, there's people I go to when I need help. And so uh, these, are, these are all people that give us advice. And so it makes, it makes sense that God can use those avenues to reach out to us, to, to draw us into his, into his family. Uh, and that's, that's how today's story went down. Uh, this, this features two friends, and God used one person. God used Philip to, get, to, to reach out to Nathaniel. I think it's important to know that even in those instances, it's important that we understand the action begins with God. Uh, verse 43 shows us that the initiating action was Jesus finding Philip. 
I love the, I love the word he says, Jesus found Philip. It indicates purpose. It indicates seeking. Uh, Jesus didn't uh, go into, you know, Jesus didn't just you know, kind of sit there and, and hope that Philip showed up. Or just, it wasn't Philip doing the seeking of Jesus. Philip, uh, Jesus went and found Philip. He sought him out. Jesus had a plan. He knew, uh, he, he had a plan of how he wanted us to play out, and he went to work. He, he initiated everything. And uh, you know, just, like, just like in our lives, God is the prime actor. Sometimes we get up, we get caught up in all of our own things about what we're doing, about our lives, who we're talking to, what's going on, uh, jobs or you know family stuff or this that, or the other, and and uh, we forget that God is the beginning and the end. God initiates, and God is the is the goal of everything. And just like with Philip, and just like with Nathaniel, God is reaching out to us. And just like He initiated this scene in the Book of John, He's reaching out to each and every one of us. And then we see we see Philip's response. Um, Jesus told Philip to follow, and Philip's first action is to go find Nathaniel. At first, I thought that was odd. You know, Jesus said, "Follow me," and the first thing Philip did was turn and go the other way. I, I found that a little little strange at first, but uh, and I, I, I saw that same word. It says Philip went and found Nathaniel. That same word. I, I love that that sequence of events. Jesus found Philip. Philip found Nathaniel. It, it necessary flows one to the next, and I, I think it's so cool that. He cared, uh, and Philip cared about his friend Nathaniel so much, the first thing he wanted to do was go tell him about this amazing thing. Uh, you know, he, didn't just, he didn't just wait, and just like, you know, just like with, with Jesus and Philip, Philip didn't just sit around hoping Nathaniel found Jesus on his own. He didn't just think, oh, if I sit here long enough, you know, Nathaniel, Nathaniel will hear about Jesus and come running. Uh, he went and he found him. He went and grabbed Nathaniel and said, hey, you need to come see this guy. You, you, need, this, you need to hear about Jesus. You need to hear about the good news. And, uh, it, it was just like with Jesus. It was it was an intentional act. Uh, and you know, for some of us, this is, this is how we came to know the Lord. And you, in this subset of using people in our lives, uh, maybe God put someone in our lives to bring us to Him. Uh, I heard a lot of s- stories about people in this church you know, being invited by a friend, and coming one time, and when you know it, now they're here and their kids are here. Uh, you know, twenty years later. Uh, you know, perhaps like this story, it was, a, it was a friend or a family member, some, some young enthusiast, enthusiastic uh, follower who was just eager to share their faith with someone else. They, maybe they invited you, as a, you know, to, come, to come to an event, maybe one of our, you know, spr- uh, maybe our youth uh, uh, conference in the spring, uh, or maybe our unity service that we, uh, we, have, uh, we had uh, last year, or maybe our upcoming Valentine banquet, February 17th, tickets to $20. So... Uh, <laughs> Uh, other times, though, it may be an older or wiser disciple instructing and, instructing and mentoring the next generation. Uh, when I was reading this, I couldn't help but be reminded of uh, the story of Samuel. Uh, in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3, it's the story of God calling Samuel. And Samuel was in the employment of, of a priest named Eli in the temple. And uh, God God called Samuel, and Samuel didn't know what was going on, so he, he thought it was his master calling. So he went and told Eli, you know, Master, I'm here. And uh, it, this happened three or four times. Eli didn't know what was going on either, but eventually Eli realized that God was, God was calling Samuel. And so Eli helped instruct Samuel. He taught Samuel how to respond to Jesus' call. He poured into him. He discipled him. He was, he was an active part of his life and helping him to understand the way God was acting in his life and teaching him, you know, he, he said, hey, Next time God calls you, I want you to say, you know, your servant is here. So I think you just, it was, it's a, uh, just, and in the same, in, in that same way, we have older people in our lives, mentors, superiors, uh, grandparents, aunts, uncles, why, you know, I, I may be the, I may be the, the minister with a degree here, but there are folks here that I'm, I learn so much from. I learn more from y'all than I, than I teach you. I, I can guarantee you that. I think there's, there is, uh, there is a value to having um, people in, in your life who are pouring into you, who are helping draw you near to God. And I, I'm sure there, are, and I know there are a lot of folks here who came to know God through through a parent, through a grandparent, through through a family member. Uh, but it's not just the initial bringing us, the the just it's not not just bringing us to Christ initially. Uh, God also uses the people in our lives once we're already Christians, uh, despite what. We may believe Christianity isn't a one-time thing. 
Uh, you, don't, you don't sign on the dotted line, pray a sinner's prayer, and then live happily ever after. Uh, it's a lifelong pursuit. It's a change of lifestyle. It's changing directions. Uh, if, if, Philip, and you, if Philip went and found Nathaniel, and Nathaniel had to stop what he was doing, he had to get up, he had to turn around, and he had to go find Jesus. And you, Jesus' command to Philip was, follow me, not you know, come to a service one time and then you're okay. And it's, uh, even, if someone, even if someone shows Christ to us, even if someone introduces us to God, to Jesus, to this church family, we have to stick to that path. Uh, James says that we have to remain steadfast if we are to receive the crown of life. Uh, one of the most spiritually flourishing times in my life was when I was in high school. Uh, I was part of a youth group back home, and uh, we, I was a part of what we, what we called it an accountability group. Uh, basically, uh, there, I, there were four, there were th- me and three other guys who got together once a week, and uh, we talked. We we prayed for each other. We talked about what we were struggling with. The the you know what kind of things were weighing on our mind. What kind of sins were we struggling with? And that vulnerability uh, allowed us to allow them to come into our lives and to continue this process, to continually draw us closer to Christ. Not just you know, invite us to church once, but every day drawing us back to God. As we, as we would start to drift away, they would pull us back. You know, uh, you know, they said, you know, they, they say, hey, you know, hey man, uh, you, I think I, I saw you looking too long at that girl in the hallway. I think you need to check, you need to check on that. Or, you know, I know you, you told me you're struggling with anger, and I saw that you really were about to lose your temper today as you were driving. So just, there's the, that intentional community, that being a part of that family that cared so much about each other that we, that, we were, that we were constantly pulling each other back in line, constantly drawing each other back to Christ. Uh, it's a, it's, it was a, it's a very powerful tool. I think it's something that, that we, uh, we don't do very often. I think uh, we do the members of our church family a grave disservice if we just sit quietly and, uh, and let them go astray. Uh, you, our Sunday school groups, our layman's league and ladies auxiliary, these are all chances for us to come together as a community and grow as a community and build our community. Uh, we, have, you, we have friends and family all around us that care for us, and if you care for them, I think you owe it to, the, to yourself and to them to, to make sure that they, are being, that, they, that they are being the best Christians they can be. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying you know, point the judgy finger and you just go pull it, pull it, and you do a whole, you know, a holier than thou kind of thing. There is a right way and a wrong way to, to show your Christian brothers and sisters encouragement. Uh, but I think it's, it's important that, just like Philip brought Nathaniel to Jesus, I think it is a continual process. Every day we need to be pulling our brothers and sisters back to Christ that we can hold together as a church family. So uh, I want to close with this. Uh, just you kind of, the, the takeaway for the day. Like, like Nathaniel, we need to be responsive to the way God works through the people in our lives, through our friends and through our family. Uh, if, you know, if, if you hear God talking to you through someone, be responsive. If you, it, if you, and if a, God is going to use the people in our lives to reach us. It's just a matter of we, we need to be willing to listen and we need to be able, we need, like Nathaniel, we need to stand up and we need to go find Jesus when it happens. Uh, that if, you're, if, you're, if you're not a believer... That may mean coming to meeting Jesus for the first time. And if you are a believer, that's going to be a continual daily process of renewal of every day. Every day is a new day, coming to Jesus and, and being reminded of who he is and what he's done for us and, uh, and being a part of his family. But also, uh, also, I want, us to, I want to encourage us to be like Philip and like Eli. Uh, if God puts people in our lives that we can reach, reach them. Uh, go, to your, go to your friends, go to your coworkers, invite them to church events, and, you know, and ask if you can pray for them. Uh, help them if they need help. Uh, we, uh, just like God called Philip, God is calling each of us to affect the people in our lives, to, to impact the world for him. So... Uh, I, I want to ask you, uh, who is God sending you to? Who is God putting on your heart to bring into the family or to bring back into a, re- into a right relationship with him? Uh, 
just like Jesus found Philip and just like Philip found Nathaniel, who is God asking you to find today? Let's close in a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you that, that you've given us your, your holy scriptures to, to learn about you, to learn what, about your family, to learn about your son, Jesus, God. Lord, I pray that, that you would use this, uh, what we've learned here today, God, and it, w- it wouldn't just go in one ear and out the other. I pray that it wouldn't just fall on the ground. God, God but I pray that it, would, that it would penetrate our hearts, that it would change us, that it would shape us, that we would be transformed and drawn close to you so that we may impact your world for your people. Lord, I pray that you would give us the courage to be like Philip, that we can go out and and speak to our friends and family, that we can encourage them, that we can show them your love, God, and that we can draw them close to you. Lord, I give us, and I I ask that you, uh, that you make us like Nathaniel, that we would be responsive when we, when, when we receive those calls, God, I pray that you would uh, make us receptive to them, that we would, that we would, that we would perceive them, that we wouldn't, that we wouldn't miss them or ignore them, God, and I pray that we would turn and come to you, Lord. Lord, above all, I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And just like Jesus is the prime actor of this story, God, Jesus is also the prime actor in our lives, God. He is is calling us. He is reaching out to us. He wants us to come to him, to to confess our sins, to, to accept him into our hearts, God, and to believe that he is your son and he is the way, the truth, and the life. God, I thank you for that. I thank you for your son. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.